Right Neats, how's it going? In today's video, Dawn of the Aspects, finishing chapter 11. Let's go! Deep down, Malagos knew eating the remains of another proto-dragon was the opposite of what he should do, so he leapt in the air and started flying as fast as he could. At first, he was just simply trying to get as far away from the corpse as possible. Didn't matter where he ended up. But, after the cool wind in his face cleared his mind a bit, he decided to arc back towards the path Koros and his mates had taken. Both Malagos and Kalek also noted Galakron's scent, suggesting that Koros was now back to tracking the behemoth. Obviously, they just stopped for a quick break and a light snack. However, the wrongness in Galakron's scent stirred Malagos' desire to consume flesh again. Although he managed to fight against it, the strain was greater this time, so that's probably something to keep an eye on. As Malagos picked up his pace, Kalek could sense that his host still didn't really have a plan. But Malagos did have some idea of what Koros was going to do next. The treacherous bastard would likely approach Galakron to make him an offer. An offer to lead the rest of the Proto-Dragons into a trap. A flash of blue-green from below caught Malagos' attention. There was some movement near a small creek, so the blue landed a short distance away from what he'd seen. As he crept towards it, he could hear some frantic gulping. One of Koros' family was lapping up water, as if he'd never seen water before. Whilst Kalek had no idea which one of Koros' cronies this was, Malagos recognised the male as one of the most hesitant to partake in the gang's previous gruesome feast. He also didn't look very well. As he swallowed another mouthful of water, he coughed up half of it, as well as a chunk of undigested flesh, which in turn made Malagos' stomach churn. And that must have made a noise or something, because it alerted the unwell-looking proto-dragon. The sickened male moved so quickly you'd have thought he was perfectly healthy, Kalek's host barely pulled back in time to avoid having his throat ripped out as his attacker fought with almost mindless fury. Within seconds, Malagos was absolutely covered in scratches and slashes. Fortunately, none of them were fatal. But his injuries and the strain of the fight seemed to have caused the bite wound from the last video to start throbbing again. And Kalek then felt his intelligent and adaptable host turn into some kind of rabid beast. The blue bit and tore and ripped mercilessly into the sickened male. All Kalek could do was watch in horror as his host fell upon his weakened adversary. Malagos then bit through his opponent's throat, tearing off half of it, but rather than toss the flesh to one side, the blue threw it up in the air and opened his gullet. However, just in time, Malagos came to his senses. He hacked up the flesh from his throat and stumbled back. What the balls was all that about? The bite from the undead pounded harder than ever, and Malagos kind of glared at it and gave it a dirty look. But then his eyes widened as he came to a sudden realisation. That bite had infected him, urged him towards the same foul course that Galakrond followed. But knowing this didn't make it any easier to control. The fresh corpse next to him radiated traces of the victim's life essence, and all he wanted to do was dive right into the buffet. So, just like at the start of this video, Malagos leapt into the air again, and launched himself in the direction of Koros. He concentrated as hard as he could on the thought of his rival, and a potential encounter with Galakrond, and he didn't dare allow himself to think about anything else. But Kalik was thinking about a lot of things. One bite had nearly driven Malagos beyond saving. How many others have been bitten? How many others will be? This is really starting to look like a hopeless situation. And Kalik was also somewhat intrigued by the moment of connection he and Malagos had shared in the last video. The more time he'd spent in these visions of the past, the more in harmony he felt with his host. We are becoming one, Kalik decided. And that thought didn't seem to disturb him at all. Kalik urged his host to use greater speed, and Malagos did just that which made Kalik feel really proud of himself, as he considered this further proof of his growing control. Even if it absolutely could have just been a coincidence. Galakron must be stopped. Galakron and Koros. This mission had become more real to Kalik than his own life, which is precisely what he told himself to avoid, but I think we've all learned by now that he's an idiot. Malagos then suddenly dived for the ground, and Kalik caught a glimpse of Koros and his followers through his host's eyes. Even though Malagos had reacted quickly, the female of the group turned her head back, as if sensing something. To be fair, she had actually just been looking for the missing member of their party, but she'd inadvertently discovered that missing member's murderer instead. She immediately warned Koros and the rest, so Malagos darted through a narrow pass in an attempt to cheese it. His eyes darted about all over, trying to judge which of the many pathways would be best to take as he retreated. Unfortunately, Malagos didn't notice Koros come at him from around the next bend, straight in front of him. Koros rammed into Malagos, causing them both to crash into a wall, and this knocked the wind out of Kalak's host. He tried to regain his breath, but Koros lunged at him, stopping him from inhaling, somehow. The female then joined the fight, and both her and Koros looked set to go for the jugular. And then the land shook. Rock and earth tumbled down on the three, Malagos receiving the brunt of the collapse. Koros and the female thrust themselves away, vanishing behind falling debris. 
A heavy rock pinned Malagos's wing, so he forced his body over the trapped appendage. The pain in this motion was excruciating, but it allowed the blue to slide the rock off. Malagos then excelled his trusty frost breath to provide some cover from further falling rocks, and eventually the collapse ended. But he wasn't out of the woods yet. He could barely breathe, and the frosty cover he created was beginning to break up. So the blue decided the best thing to do would be to try and push himself free fast enough to avoid being crushed. He considered the state of his body. The injuries he'd sustained meant that he was going to need to be a little bit creative in this action. So he used his hind paws to launch himself off the ground and his face to break through the ice. He'd been certain that Koros would be waiting to snap his head off once he emerged, so when that didn't happen, he was quite relieved. As Malagos paused to consider what to do next, a sound like thunder or possibly another tremor erupted. But it wasn't any of those things. It was in fact the rumble of a very large creature. It was then that both Kallik and his host came to understand that what they'd thought was an earthquake had actually been the simple landing of Galakrond. And we're leaving it there! Malagos is having a bit of a hard time recently, isn't he? Just constantly getting beaten up and stuff. But in the next video, it'll be Koros that ends up having a bit of a shit time, so that's cool. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying the book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page to you. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and... See ya!